I'm hungry. Can we have some Filipino food? Oh, and our viewers have been asking us to cook some Filipino food at home, so we should do that. Can I make the dessert? Totally. Well, Brooklyn's busy with school all afternoon, so let's go to H Mart. Let's go. I'm taking my Teddy Blake purse. You're probably gonna see me walking around Manila with it soon, but it is handcrafted Italian leather and I love bringing it around with me and it's gonna be on sale up to 70% off and I'm gonna leave a link for you in the description. H Mart is a super popular Asian market and they have two locations in the Metro Denver area. And we're at the Aurora location. So it's the same city as the Manila Bay Filipino restaurant episode that we made last year. It was super legit Filipino food that they had there and it's a little bit tempting to just go back there and save ourselves the work of shopping and cooking at home. But this is what our viewers asked for. So we're gonna be cooking at home for you. And you know what? I see something very familiar, the face shop. That is a store that I've been to a few times on High Street in BGC. We're gonna be making the super popular chicken adobo, probably the most popular dish in the Philippines. And I think it's a reasonable recipe that I might be able to do. I wish we could make lechon because it's probably my favorite Filipino dish. Although that actually reminds me of another dish that we had at Manila Bay Restaurant, which was that crispy pork pata. Woo. Well, this is pretty much the big daddy right here. It's crispy pata, which is a complete pork hock, deep fried until it's super crispy. So this is what we're doing instead of our lechon tonight. I don't even know how to eat this, but there's a big knife, so I'm guessing I just start stabbing and cutting away. Now look, it doesn't even move. Like, that's crispy. <laughs> I have to see what this is all about. Can you see how that is a hoof? Is that what you call it, a hoof? I, yeah. A pig hoof? Mm -hmm. All the bones. Oh, so crispy. Mmm, the skin is so crispy. It really pulls apart pretty easily. It is so hot though. It's burning hot. It's our house made soy sauce. That's good. All right, I gotta get into this big part here. <laughs> All right, if you like crispy skin on lechon, you would love this. That's phenomenal. Mmm. Yeah, that was crazy crispy, but I don't know if we could do that at home. I'm gonna make a calamansi sorbet because I love the calamansi drink we had last year. If they have calamansi though, otherwise we might have to use lime. I am heartbroken. I don't think they have calamansi. It's like kind of a key ingredient for some of the things we want to do. Calamansi, calamansi we have frozen. Frozen? Yeah, in the IRA. Ooh, that's maybe perfect for sorbet. That'd okay. be fun. Yeah. yeah. That'll work. Thank you. IRA. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Actually, they have frozen calamansi, so that might work perfectly for what we need. Calamansi. Oh my gosh, look at all this seaweed. Brooklyn would go crazy. I bet she's gonna be sad she missed this. Well, I could make the pata. Ham hocks. I'm not seeing any calamansi stuff anywhere, so I think we're gonna switch to another Asian fruit called the sour soap. It's more like a kiwi taste, rather a sour taste, but we have some right here, actually. Is it sour soap? I don't... Yep. We're looking for that main ingredient, the chicken, and the recipe calls for chicken thighs and chicken drumsticks, bone in, skin on. I think we passed it, actually. Zip, zipping backwards. All right, right here. Chicken drumstick cut. They don't look like the drumsticks I have in mind. How about this? Those are huge. That must have been like a ginormous chicken. Yeah, all right, let's go with those. Sounds good. From what I understand in the recipe, we can use any part of the chicken that we want, so maybe we'll just go with those drumsticks. We gotta get two to feed our family of five. We need whole black peppercorn um, and two whole fresh bay leaves. We have black peppercorns at home, FYI. What else do we need for the sorbet? I don't think anything. I think we just need water, sugar, and the juice you got. I'm not seeing any fresh bay leaves, so we're just gonna grab the dry ones. When in doubt, I think you can substitute. Mom, can I please drink this bubble milk tea with dinner tonight? Boba tea, obsessed. It's like all he wants when we're on High Street. We gotta make a boba tea stop before we go home each day. All right. Yes! 
Hey, there's one more thing we've got to have, and that is white rice. Because it's not a real Filipino meal, even at home, if we don't have white rice. You're gonna think we're crazy, but we don't have a rice cooker. <laughs> so we're going with this uh, already cooked white rice. You just put it in the microwave, and it's ready. No mess, no fuss. Yay! I wanna see how ripe they are, but these aren't Philippine mangoes, so obviously it's not gonna be half as good, but it's probably better than nothing. I want them to be a little bit soft, I think. I'm surprised that it doesn't say what country that the mangoes are from because all the other fruit stands and produce say what country it's from, like the pomelo from China, the pomegranate from the US, um, and I'm seeing a lot of produce from Mexico as well, so it's not just Asia here. Just a lot of Asia. All the other ingredients we need, we have at home, so we can check out now. Thank you so much. And my least favorite thing, getting a plastic bag because we forgot ours in the car. I really get mad at myself for that. Colt's in charge of the groceries. I guess we should mention that H Mart is probably only 20 minutes from our house. Oh, they're in the back. Let's do some cooking. Let's get to it. But you know what? There's something that makes cooking fun no matter how bad you are at it. And that is having a drink in your hand. I don't want to be paranoid, but I kind of feel like Phil was talking to me when he mentioned how bad you might be at cooking. Not at all just how good I am at making cocktails. 100%. Let's go. Phil is so good at making cocktails. He seriously needs like a whole bar theme around him. Like not just a restaurant, but like the alcohol and the restaurant and the cocktails should all be named after him because he's so good at mixologing. Yes, that's a new word I made up. <sighs> we don't have olives. I was gonna make a martini. We have lemons. I'll make it with a twist. Go, baby. Thank you very, very much. I have a tiny pour, much appreciated. All right, let's fire up. Fire up the kitchen. Chicken adobo has been in the Philippines for a really, really long time. Because Spain occupied the Philippines for about 300 years. It's Reagan! Our eldest daughter has appeared. Hi, Vega. Hey. <laughs> I've taken the chicken, I put it in the pot with the, the oil at the bottom, seasoned it with salt on each side, patted it dry, and now I'm browning it on each side. So it's like a medium to high heat. Let me tell you the other ingredients. We have soy sauce, rice vinegar, water, garlic, bay leaves, peppercorn. Now, I'm probably going to do things that look a little different to you. I actually did not grow up learning how to cook, and I do love cooking, but it just feels like with our busy schedules, we never have enough time. Because I love the farm to table, I love the long, slow process, and I just, I don't feel like we have enough time for a long, slow process, except for today. We're gonna do this step by step now. If you cook chicken adobo and you have a, a traditional recipe that you love or a system that you like to use or a little tip for me, please share. Like I love to learn about other techniques and things that we can do to, to like dive more into the culture. We love to learn more about the Filipino culture, but you're probably gonna see a lot of like uh, what do you call it, Phil American mix? Like we're trying to make Filipino food, but I bet you I have a little American style in it. <laughs> now you can hear it sizzling, getting crispy. Haven't gotten enough love yet. 
All right, a little PSA from Phil. We just got a shipment in the mail today and it was our new business cards. We've had these for a long time, but we had to make a different version because now we have two channels. So we got these, and now we have always be changing on one side, LTP on the other side, and both of them have QR codes that go straight to our YouTube channels. These are key when we're walking around any place and people are like, are you a YouTuber, are you a YouTuber? We hand these out. So if you see us on the street, there you go. Of course you guys already follow us. You don't need a card. It does have our phone number on it though. Now I am going to remove the chicken. Ooh, look how crispy that little skin is. Yeah, you're gonna take later, I know. Now I gotta add some of these ingredients, like the these drier ingredients: the garlic, bay leaves, and the peppercorn. Here we go. Garlic. Peppercorn. Brooklyn just finished school. I'm making mango sticky rice. You think so? Uh huh. We have mangoes, right? Yeah. Do we have Do we have coconut milk? Yes. I think we do. Come look. Why could be over here? We do, we have, we have coconut milk. So can I? Yeah, find a recipe. I love this idea, cause I love mangoes. And I love mango sticky rice. Okay, Nailed so it. everybody does. I'm not the only one in the family who loves mangoes. Okay, so I'm stirring this around, getting the aromas to pop out and say hello. Let me smell. Mmm, I like that scent. Uh, and now I'm gonna add the water. There we go. So I know already, I've never made this before, but I already know from the name that I'm gonna be making a sauce for the meat to stick in. How does it smell? It smells great. I knew it. All right, like I was saying, I know that this is going to be like saucy for the, the meat to sit in because adobo is a Spanish word for marinade. So I know that the chicken is going to be sitting in a sauce and like soaking up those flavors because that's what a marinade is. All right, now we are we're turning this up to high. Now let's sit these pieces in. There we go. Sorbet. Sorbet. There's so much going on. Uh, I'm gonna bring this to a boil with the lid off and we'll go from there. Now that it's boiling, I'm gonna reduce the heat and let it simmer and then put the lid on. Woo! And it just needs 20 minutes and it's ready to serve. I'm gonna flip the chicken halfway through. So uh, in about 10 minutes, I'm gonna do that. But when it's done, we can serve it except for everything I'm reading says that chicken adobo is better if you let it sit overnight and it's because the vinegar really mellows out overnight. So there are a lot of recipes that recommend doing that whole process, refrigerating it, and then the next day broiling it to heat it up and then serve. But we're doing this all in one day, one episode, so we're just gonna serve it. And in the meantime, Brooklyn is gonna make our appetizer. So I'm gonna make some mango sticky rice and we're supposed to use glutinous sweet rice, but we only have just some regular white white rice, which I prefer because I don't really like the, uh, my food very sweet, I guess. And it's already gonna be sweet in the sauce and mangoes and stuff, so I'm pretty sure it just evens it out. So I take one cup of coconut milk to boil with some sugar and salt. Watch me spill this all over the stove and then it breaks the stove. Uh, so now I'm adding some sugar and salt. We actually made mango sticky rice once when we were in Thailand. We were doing this elephant experience in Chiang Rai. It was insane. We loved that. And the cooking class was so fun. The kids loved it. Brooklyn, in our school, she goes to Ignite Learning Academy and it's an online academy and they have a cooking club. So every Wednesday, she does like a little cooking thing with the class, it's so fun. I love that we have two dessert style dishes tonight and that neither one of them really compete with what we did at Manila Bay Restaurant. We had some fantastic desserts there. There was the Halo Halo, which we've had many times in many places. And then the Mais Con Hielo, which is by far my favorite. I like that a whole lot better than the Halo Halo. <laughs> but this is a little masterpiece that I'm excited about because the description sounds phenomenal. This is called Maiz Con Hielo, and it is 
sweet corn, it is sweet milk, it is shaved ice, and it's got cornflake cereal, and then it's topped with a magnolia corn cheese ice cream. <laughs> corn as a dessert, I think, is just so underrated. I'm excited about this ice cream. I think that's one of the best ice creams I've ever had. Corn and cheese. <laughs> this is like ice cream cereal. It's corn, big lump and up. I could eat corn for dessert. It's so sweet as it is. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. That looks fun. All right, I'm flipping. We are halfway through. And I actually took a little longer because I think that these need to cook longer because they're really big gummies. So now I have to remove it from heat and keep it warm. I'm gonna put this. Uh, it's, it's meant to be microwaved. <laughs> what does it say on there? But I bet, I bet if we put it in the heat, in the boiling. I mean, oh, oh. It. <laughs> it slipped on my hands. It slipped on my hands. It slipped on my hands. Oh my goodness. Okay. I feel like a part of it broke off. But I bet it's if it gets hard. heated up, it'll, it'll become the consistency. Wow, this is a hot mess. <laughs> It says to take the heat off. I know Aaron said to give us your advice and your tips and all that stuff, but that doesn't apply to this dish. We know this is very atypical, but she's having fun with it, and I think it's gonna be delicious, so save your opinions for the other dishes. Okay, to make your sour soup, sorbet, again, we're gonna make some shortcuts here. Because we have limited time, I make a lot of ice cream. We've made sorbets together, maybe. And here's the thing, it can take hours because usually what you're gonna do is melt sugar with some liquids and it could be milk or creams for ice cream or it's gonna be water for sorbets like this. But what we're gonna do is shorten the time because guess what? The main thing here is that we have to do water with sugar and we have to dissolve the sugar completely. But I've already done that for cocktails. I made something called simple syrup, which is equal parts sugar and water brought to a boil until it dissolves, and then we chill it, and guess what? It's right here in the refrigerator. Here. All right. Okay, now that we got and our look, sugar water. It's about a cup and a half, which is perfect for the recipe. So what we need is one cup of water, one cup of sugar. And when you put those things together, this is pretty much the amount that you're gonna end up with. So we're good to go right there. Then, one cup of freshly squeezed lime juice. That would be if you're making a lime sorbet, but we're not. We're gonna make the sour soap. So we already have that juice that's frozen, nice and cold, so that's gonna speed it up. Yep, I'm gonna and then, smell it. Okay. It's gonna smell great. While he's opening that, the only other thing we need is lime zest. And even though this isn't lime, we're gonna do lime zest because it's gonna make it look cool. Gets like a little bit of green chunks in there in the final sorbet. How's it look? How's it smell? Oh, it smells like a... Pear. A pear. Sour pear. That's exactly what it smells like. He's so good. What a great palate. That's actually great. Wow. That's delicious. First thing you need to do, buddy, is go downstairs and get the ice cream freezer. Another part of the ice cream maker here. You know what? I'm actually really happy about the fact that we have this on our website under Stuff We Love. Follow abc.com slash Stuff We Love. We have used this so much over the past 13 or 14 years. Making ice creams and sorbets is actually surprisingly easy when you have a little machine like this. Just stuff it down in there. Keep it cold until we're ready. Next step. I'm gonna check on the chicken. It's been the 20 minutes, but I feel like these pieces are so big, they're gonna need longer to cook. Ooh, I'm gonna pinch into this. I don't know, it looks pretty cooked throughout. That looks pretty good. I don't know if it needs much longer. I'm gonna flip them over and maybe just let it simmer just a little bit longer until everybody else is done cooking their parts and it'll be ready to serve. Here are all the mangoes that uh, I'm supposed to cut up. Okay, so now we're gonna pour this in here. It's a little more than a cup of sour soap. All right, calm down, calm down. And then a little more than a cup of sugar water. Nice, now we blend it up maybe? Not yet. You gotta do some uh, lime zest. And here's the thing with zest. You don't wanna go like this over and over and over because once you get past the green part, it's very bitter, right? So you wanna just go shh, shh, shh. Constantly, constantly turning so you only get the green stuff in there and do it from up here so it falls in there. Is that good? 
good. We're gonna just stir this up. It should smell. melt a bit. So we gotta wait for this to melt and then it'll turn into juice. Okay, now that the sour soap is starting to like melt, I see that it actually is just like chunks of fruit. So that's not gonna work for the sorbet. We have to blend it up and that's fine because I'm just gonna grab the immersion blender. Let's see if I can do this without making a major mess. I think that's probably good. We don't care if there are a few chunks in there. Ice cream or sorbet with chunks, they can be kind of good, especially when it's fresh fruit yeah, or frozen fruit. Soon. Colt's getting a tasting spoon. Since I am the chef, I must use the tasting spoon. Oh, that's so good. What do you think? Is it gonna work? Hey, we're all family here. I'm just gonna use. I wish it was more sour and less soft. It's perfect. That's how easy ice cream and sorbet is. You kidding me? That's perfect. We're gonna put this in the refrigerator, not the freezer, just to keep it chilled so that it's as cold as possible, but we're not even gonna put it in the machine yet because it's gonna do it so quickly. We will do that after we've eaten some of the other food. Otherwise, the machine's gonna be going, it's gonna be loud, and it's gonna be done way before we need it to be done. I love that Brooklyn's making a very different kind of appetizer. It's kind of more of a dessert than an appetizer, uh, but it's really different than the appetizer we had at the Manila Bay restaurant we went to, which was cine gang fries. And I was blown away by those flavors of that cine gang. It was like such an interesting seasoning mince. Maybe calamansi is in that? These are cine gang fries, and they are fries with a, a bunch of cine gang seasonings, a creamy aioli sauce, and topped with some green onion. <laughs> I want this saucy one because I'm really saucy and saucy rhymes with saucy. Salt and spicy mayo mixed together with seasonings. It's like a spicy mayo, but there is a really yummy salty taste. It's like a little kick to the salt, right? And it has a spicy mayo flavor. Yeah. I don't think it's spicy though. But there's something tangy about like the salt specifically. Y'all know that we're in our home in Denver, but we're only about two and a half weeks away from being back in BGC. So it'll be easy to compare our chicken adobo here. When we go back, we can try chicken adobo. You can tell that we have legitimately been cooking for hours because when we started this, it was very bright out. When we got home, it was still light out. And now you can see through the windows, it's dark. We're gonna take our uber fancy, uh, already cooked microwavable white rice. Don't laugh at us. And we're gonna plate up. Ooh. I think I did a good job because it's smelling pretty nice. Put that right in the middle. And then let me get a spoon to, to get some of the sauce. What? Am I a Filipino chef? I might be. Oh, it smells so good. And like, it's practically slow cooked because it's been in that thing now for like, what, at least an hour. It kind of reminds me of the other dish that we had at uh, Manila Bay, which was the oxtail kare kare. That was a good slow cooked dish too. This is what I really wanted when I saw it on the menu. It's oxtail kare kare. And it has a peanut sauce, eggplant, and bok choy. I see kari kari on the menus a lot when we're in the Philippines, and this is the first time, I think, that I can remember, we've actually had it, and I love oxtail. Oh my gosh, I thought it was gonna be hard to cut, like I might need a knife. That was really easy to get some meat off of it. And this is shrimp paste. Our server, who's from the Philippines, said that we take just a little dot and put it on there. It's probably gonna be pretty salty, so I'm not gonna do too much. Mmm, that peanut sauce is really good. The oxtail is really yummy too. And that shrimp paste, like, it tastes like there's a shrimp on it. I don't think it's too salty though, not at all. It's awesome. I'm gonna start with Brooklyn's appetizer, the mango sticky rice. Mmm, I got it all over my face. Brooklyn, you did an excellent job, that's so good. So much coconut flavor. It was really good, I'm really impressed. And it didn't make one bit of difference that we had that uh, already cooked, uh, dried rice. That's awesome, and the rice is cooked perfectly too. Good job, Brooklyn! Okay, now I wanna try some of my chicken adobo. Oh, it just fell apart. That's a good sign. I approve, I think I did a good job. That's good. 
It's delicious, I love it, thank you. Well, I think it's a pretty darn good meal. We're not even done, we still have dessert. That I made, I made you guys dessert. Oh, babe, you did a great job. It's crazy that you got it to fall off the bone like this in just an hour or so. It's really good, baby. Brooklyn's mango sticky rice is some of the best I've had. I don't care what you say. The only thing that I think we were missing tonight from our experience at the Manila Bay restaurant would be the bongus seasig. So that milkfish seasig. And seasig's another very classic Filipino dish. I wanna dive right into this. It's bongus seasig. And so it's a milkfish that's chopped up and boneless, deep fried onions, different onions, green onions, red onions, and it looks and smells so, so good. I could have used a spoon. And I love how it like it's plated on the fish, just filleted open. Mm. Really good. This fish is still really, really juicy. And it's really salty too. It almost tastes like soy, soy sauce. I, I'll have a little piece. Do like a mm -hmm. shovel. Okay. Very seasoning. Yeah. Maybe a little soy sauce. Oh, definitely has that same seasoning the french fries had. While we're digesting our dinner, there are a few more steps that Colt needs to take to finish up dessert. Now I have to get the stuff out of the refrigerator and the freezer so we can start making the sorbet. Mm -hmm. Alright, bud. Here's how we do it. All of it. Nice work. This goes in here. This goes up here. Mm. It's hard to say, but since it's already pretty cold, I think it might be 15 to 20 minutes. It's got quite a bit left to go. It's not as cold as we wanted it to be, but my sister has to leave soon, so we're gonna put it in some bowls and serve it up. That's not too bad. It's gonna be a little slushy, but I feel like sorbet is a lot looser than ice cream anyways. Mmm. Oh, it's really sweet. I thought that it was gonna be sour. I think because I was thinking we were doing calamansi, so I had that in my head, but that sour soap is really yummy and super sweet. What about the sour soap? The sour soap is also good. Mmm. <laughs> it tastes great and it really has that, I don't know what made it have that sorbet taste because mm -hmm. whenever I have sorbet, it has that like limey taste, but all we did was put like lime skin in it, so that might be it, but. It's good, bud. You can really tell that it's sorbet and nothing less. Mm. Now that we're done eating dessert. Speak for yourself. But while Colt finishes up his dessert, I just wanna say thank you for all the comments, the recommendations that we get. So thank you for asking us to make some Filipino food at home. It was a great idea and it was a great exercise for us. Uh, I loved cooking the chicken adobo. I can do that again and again and again. That was a way easy recipe. And then Brooklyn's mango sticky rice. I didn't realize how easy it would be for her to make that at home. Doing the sour soap sorbet, Great job, Colt. So this is all stuff we can do again at home. So we're doing it again tomorrow? Maybe, I don't know, we could. <laughs> but please make sure if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. Also that notification bell, cause that'll let you know when our next upload is. Hopefully it's gonna be soon and we'll see you in the next episode. It's too hot.